Most drivers can imagine that when a car runs out of gas, it stops. However, few drivers can imagine that when running out of gas happens in a desert, with no chance of help, everyone in the car perishes. This car in the desert tragedy may be a correct description for our global civilization if it runs out of fossil fuels. In 1972, a group at MIT discovered such a running out of gas event. In their data, this red line can be thought of as civilization's gas gauge. It shows the amount of resources remaining in the Earth's crust. Full in 1900, 85% full in 1972, and empty at the bottom of the graph. This black line shows how global population responded to high resource delivery, first rising towards 6 billion in 2050, and then with declining resources, descending toward 3 billion by 2100, including births, running out of gas costs 5 billion deaths. Because this die-off happened so far in the future and the system's dynamic technique was still under development, it seemed too bold to report. So they focused the report on two of civilization's well-being indicators, food per capita green and industrial per capita gold. To everyone's surprise, the simulation suggested that both stop growing here. They titled the book, The Limits to Growth, and the Contrarian View sold 5 million copies in 30 languages. Their book faced extreme criticism that advancing technology would prevent these limits. And for 50 years, the criticism was correct. Actual well-being on Earth grew faster and to higher levels than they reported. Population grew to 8 billion, 2 billion more, and 20 years sooner than in their simulation. This supergrowth was made possible by the Green Revolution's ability to triple food production, and that wasn't included in their simulation, and technology's ability to extract energy from deeper wells, wells in deeper water, horizontal and frac wells and tar sands. These Earth's extra gas tanks hadn't been included. However, this supergrowth did not nullify the simulation's suggestion that reservoir depletion would kill 5 billion people. Why was this important part of the simulation suggestions almost universally ignored? Maybe it was due to a defect and how humans gather and process available information. People learn mostly from experience. Since the suggestions made by the simulation, especially the die-off event, had not happened in the past and was not projected to occur for 50 years in the future, experiential learning could not give these suggestions influence in the choice of behavior in 1972 that would avoid the suggested 5 billion deaths. That learning would have to be accomplished using another process. The second most common learning process is transmission. It occurs when experts convey their view of the future to the learner. Let me suggest why transmission learning is too weak to facilitate a clear enough view of a die-off event to let the learner take a painful behavior to avoid it. When an expert uses historical information, the image he transmits contains no die-off from energy depletion. When the UN's population predictions are based on fertility trends, they contain no die-off event. When experts present different views, they place the listener in a position of choosing which expert to believe. Most often, the listener has no process for determining which expert to believe. 
Thus, the MIT simulation's die-off suggestion could not be validated with transmission learning. To validate the MIT simulation suggestions, people would have to use a third learning process, one that uses the flow of mass and energy through a simulation's tanks and pipes to infer unexperienced events. Let me describe some simple examples where flows affect future events or events affect flows. More flow predicts more well-being. No experience necessary. No flow predicts no well-being. No experience necessary. Empty tank predicts no flow. No experience necessary. Empty tank predicts no well-being. No experience necessary. Machines wear out predicts replacement. No experience necessary. Replacement predicts more manufacturing, which predicts more mining, pumping, transport, and infrastructure maintenance. No experience necessary. These simple examples of tanks and flows making predictions without experience can be extended to infer future conditions of civilizations. For example, sunlight flowing onto all possible subsistence farming locations on Earth will feed 600 million people. Electric power plants and internal combustion engines are powered by flows of coal, oil, and gas. They produce power that flows to manufacturing. Manufacturing flows machines to farms, and the flows of power to these machines produce a flow of food to feed 8 billion people. Manufacturing can also create flows of machines that perform mining, refining, and pumping. And when the energy flows to these machines, fossil reservoirs flow coal, oil, and gas into storage. When more energy flows to mining machines, materials can be extracted from the crust and they flow to manufacturing. With these additional materials, manufacturing can build energy capture devices, dams, wind turbines, solar collectors, and fission reactors. And these flow 2% of total energy used to produce food into the infrastructure. The whole system keeps flowing until reservoirs become too dilute. Then, pumping and refining struggle, fuel storage empties, power plants stop, internal combustion engines stop, manufacturing stops, hydro, solar, and wind machines wear out, energy capture stops, energy to agriculture stops, and food delivery stops. If fusion or dark energy cannot replace lost energy deliveries, the Earth again produces only enough food to feed 600 million people. When will this happen? It happens when delivery tasks consume all of the extracted oil before any gets to the tractor. If this happens in the next 80 years, today's 8 billion global population must decline to 600 million. What could make that possible? Assume 8 billion people are living today. Add an estimated 8 billion born in the next 80 years. 16 billion people live during this century. Subtract the 2 billion who died of old age in the next few decades. 14 billion lived and did not die of old age. Now, if in 2100 energy flows can feed only 600 million, then this 13.4 billion people must die from either starvation or fighting over food. That's almost everyone who lives this century. And now you know civilization's running out of gas story.